Hey, it's Alex. Thanks for joining me for part three. In this one, we're going to be doing everything first person camera. However, um, if you haven't seen the last episode, you need to do that before this. So do that now and then watch this one. Okay, yeah. Enjoy the video. So now that we have a first person camera, we're going to drag it into our game and we're going to press preview. Or you can watch me press preview. You don't have to do this. It's not really interesting. We just have a cube and texture. It looks like a 2D game. How do we get it into 3D? That is the magic of this script that I'm going to be showing you. So this is the one that only takes a few lines of code. And I said before we're going to be considering mobile first, so we're going to create this with some very basic functions. We're going to start with a external event and an external group. Cuz I'm going to I'm programming this as though we are professionals, not a average developer. And uh, this is good coding practice. So this is the finite state machine part of it. We're going to be focusing on it, but not as much as I would explain it in my other videos. Uh, because I have other videos about this. So we're going to create the camera controller or camera, sorry, manager. And we're going to create the external script to manage our camera. So camera manager. We're going to import, uh, and I went to projects external events and did it this way. I went very quickly there. Uh, and I didn't, re you know, I, I maybe I should slow down as well to consider that. So show you external events, camera manager. I'm gonna add it now and launch the camera. Make sure we set it to our game scene and we're gonna start our events. And even though it's called camera manager, we're now gonna do, I'm gonna name this one actually first person camera. And we're going to start our event. So if you click on your event, your event group after you make it, Shift D to create a child. And if I did, if I clicked on the next one, did Shift D, you'd keep making it down. But this one is pretty straightforward. We're going to make four children. We're going to need four of them. And we're going to start with the, the first child. The first child is actually a parent object. So we're going to need a child element. But we're going to start with a, when you are programmed, I'm going to say this so that way we can get this out of the way. And I do mention this in other videos. If you know what you're doing, you can kind of pre-plan ahead or just give yourself some extra space. There's no harm in doing this. But as we move forward, if you have conditions that you're going to be checking multiple times, you need to make it so that you check it as least amount of possible. So don't add every condition. If we're checking something is true and we're doing micro triggers underneath each of them, make them children. Like if this button is pressed, and you have multiple functions that are going to happen for it, or if you're carrying an object is true, or you know there's some sort of transition, I don't know. You, whatever the case is, if you have multiple scripts repeating anything, form them into one group and add them at the top. In this particular case, we're only doing one. And yeah, optimization is key. So right now, though, we're going to go to the condition and do mobile. We're going to check, is a device mobile? And we're going to invert it, saying, if we are not mobile, if we're not mobile, let's do these conditions. And honestly, I just like parenting it this way, even though this is only one. I want each thing to be underneath here. So if we're not a mobile device, and in our child condition, the la uh, we're, we're going to use mouse, mouse button released. The reason why we're using released and not down is if this was true, down would run every frame that the object is down, even if you do once. You can say trigger once, and for the most part, it should just run one time, but there is a chance because of the way that just gdevelop runs script. I've done that before and still had errors. So we're just gonna use released instead, which is a one-time if true statement. You don't need to necessarily say trigger once unless you're triggering a Boolean or something. So we're gonna say, press this, and then this happens. We're going to use the left primary button. Okay. And we're going to start using our very first script that we, the extension that we added. The very first one that we do is a, an extra condition because right now this would be running, right? When it's released, trigger something endlessly, begin whatever this, this is. We need to add a, a stopping condition. And the condition is uh, the mouse pointer. So we're gonna go to we're gonna uh, we're gonna do uh, mouse and then pointer, 
or you can just say mouse point, and it's called pointer is locked. And we want this to be inverted, saying if it is not locked, okay? If the left mouse, mouse button is released and the mouse pointer is locked, or in this case is not locked, we want to request as an action, so request, the pointer is locked. And this way we don't see our, our default Windows mouse texture and a few other things. So we're gonna go in here and request pointer locked, hit okay. And then we need to make a subchild, uh, not a subchild, a, a child of the, of the main event. So a, a partner. And we're going to duplicate, holding control, we can du duplicate by dragging this down. We're going to duplicate it or just drag it into here. When we click on it and press the J key, we can unbind it. Or you can double click and unvert the condition. So it says, now the moist, the, the, the moist, the mouse pointer is locked, right? The mouse pointer is now locked. What do we want to do when our mouse pointer is locked? You may have guessed it already. What we're going to do if the mouse pointer is locked, we're going to now optimize and read our mouse input. So now we're going to change the angle of our mouse first. Now, remember, we've got some goofy stuff happening here. It may not make sense, but I'm going to I'm going to explain why we do it this way. Considering how GDevelop operates in its 3D plane, and this, this may change in the future with 3D uh, being supported more and more in every single update for GDevelop. Remember, if you're joining us now, it is still in a young stage. Remember to save often, by the way, control S, um, but it's in a young state. So what we're gonna do is go add an action, go to our first person camera, and we're gonna change the angle, right? A 2D angle, because this is a 3D object and because of how height and width and depth work, we're gonna use the 2D angle feature. And we're going to add and it's important because we're we're adding to us a value as we move around. And um, that allows us to, to basically to look, right? We're adding something. So no matter where we look, um, it's going to be like, <clears throat> well, yeah, I'll just, we're going to, we're going to do the math here. So now what we're going to do is use the mouse pointer lock movement X feature. Now that we have X, we're going to divide it by 10. And this is just a division of how smoothly do we want it to follow this, basically? It's not like a lerp. You don't want lerping. That, uh, lerping would, would, would make it so that way when you look left and look right, there's kind of this acceleration and delay in the way that your character looks. Maybe that's important for maybe some sort of weird horror element or something to add weird, fluid, delayed reactions in your camera. I don't know. I don't know why you do that, but maybe there, that, that's a reason. But 10, 10 seems to be good. You could do something else. 10's a whole a whole good number. And because when we're when we're we're moving around, the increments are are huge. So now we're going to go into the uh rotation. So again, we have to use the angle of the 2D for the for the x-axis. But because our face in, in the engine is the y-axis, we need to now go into the camera. Wrote, we need to go down to the 3D options, which is down here on angle. And now we have a new one called rotate on the Y axis. And this is the 3D Y axis and not the 2D X axis or Y axis. So this is more, this, this represents depth up and down. Okay. So now what we need to do is go into here and uh, do the same thing. We need to set it to add and then mouse pointer lock. Movement Y divided by 10. You could change it again if you wanted to. 10 is a good round number. And there's that. The next thing we want to do, and kind of outside of the script, so I'm going to add some comments. This is a great idea for those that are getting started and you want to know kind of what's going on. We're going to check if the device is in mobile mode. And then we're going to duplicate that and bring it down here. And down here, we're going to say request uh, if, um, to, oh, and the reason why, okay, the reason why we do this uh, with a mouse click release is because in GDevelop, to begin to, to, to request this pointer lock, the, uh, when we use the web version, uh, 
and, and, and this may be important for people who add music and things, the player needs to interact with the game before music can be activated. Um, we can't assume that it'll automate because some web browsers will block it and if it runs automatically. So we need to make sure that they click the button to interact with it, like I press here to start the game, and then we can implement all of these cool features. So that's why we have to click first. So you'll launch the game, click into your game, and then you can move your camera, which is pretty traditional. I mean, you wouldn't really, I mean, if you're going to use a mouse game anyways, um, you, your movement would work, but as soon as you click the mouse, then it will, it'll move your, it'll let you lock in and move your head. But we would do this before you even loaded into the game. So this would happen on the main menu right? Play game, you have to click it. So we can use that as a requirement to move forward. But for now, we're going to change this to um, if the um, request to uh, request interaction from play, uh, request a pointer lock on the camera. And then we're going to duplicate this. And we're going to say down here, uh, camera mouse movement logic. Now, now what we want to do is outside of this event, there's something important that we do. And we're gonna do something called clamping. So I'm gonna copy, again, copy the comment, do this again in the comment section, okay? We're going to prevent camera from uh, uh, flipping, okay? Uh, flipping on the X or on the Y axis. And this doesn't sound super important, necessarily immediately but i promise it is and this is this, what, what happens here and what, what we're going to program is we're going to use this y-axis and we're going to set it down here copy it duplicate it with that control or copy paste remember this is outside of the camera script so you can now or that part you can go ahead and collapse that down now we're going to say prevent camera from flipping on the y-axis which means like from uh, we're going to say actually uh from offsetting on the y-axis. We don't want this to actually get borked. So now what we're going to do is even though we're adding right here uh, and dividing by this, this amount, now what we're going to do is set this, not, not add to it. We're going to set to, and we're going to use, um, the, uh, the same, the same movement, but we're going to clamp it basically, or we're, we're going to do something very similar. So we're going to do something called clamp. And clamp needs three inputs. We need a value. So what we're clamping, the original value, the minimum of that value and the maximum of that value. Now you may want to clamp, let's say you have something like pi, you know, 3.14, blah, 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 or a really big number that you're getting. You can shrink it down to a nearest value by using the min and max. So it's like the value point, how far over, you want it to clamp so that it cuts the number off and doesn't pass through something astronomically large, you can trim that up. So what we're gonna do is trim up the movement. And so we're gonna create a clamp feature or function, and we're going to set the camera dot, and you're not gonna see this in your dropdown menu, and I'll explain why in a second, but camera dot rotation y. Oh, y. And we need to close it like we would we would do anything else. And sorry, not camera, whatever you named your camera. So in this case, we named our camera first person camera. So it needs to be first person camera. Oops. Click on camera and add first person camera. Now first person camera rotation, even though there's an error here right now, in a moment, it will go away. So we're going to clamp the first person camera with a value of negative 90 to 90. And this means we're clamping it between two values. So it will not, this, this prevents us from flipping our neck. Imagine that this is your neck. What we're doing is we're saying you can look flat with your eyes down to the floor and you can look all the way up, but you can't snap your neck and look around. You can't flip upside down, right? You're not swimming or anything like that. You don't want that to happen. <laughs> Uh, so this is this is the way we do this. So now that we have that clamp, what is happening here on the rotation? And you can see it like this. See, 3D object rotation. It's actually baked in. If you click this, it would object 3D rotation Y or just see rotation Y. We can we can just go back. We can call it 
um, as we did before, rotation Y. It's the same thing. So this looks cleaner, and it's a shorthand version of that long, that long format. But that's why we do it. Now we have one more script. So I actually lied. We don't need that many. We just need one more. And in the flow, we're going to position. We're going to copy and paste this. And now we're going to, um, let's see, prevent. We're going to say move the camera or move the eyes. Uh, allow player to look in 3D. Player's eyes. This is a condition that runs all the time. What we want to do is leave the condition blank, and we're going to run into an action, and we're going to say move. And we're going to, oh, actually, we can just write eyes, rather. Eyes are better. Mm, hello. We missed an extension. That's my fault. We missed an extension. For those that have been following along, you're, you're uh, my bad. We have one more extension to add. And that's the camera extension, the camera, uh, first person camera extension, first person 3D camera. That is why. <laughs> so now that we close that after we add it, we can go into our actions, type eyes, and look through object eyes. And we're going to click on the first person camera. And then we're going to hit OK. And now if I was to click preview, and I will, so you can see, we can now see and look up and down. You might have this crazy purple block and wonder what in the heck is going on. That is because the player's block at the beginning is viewable. Even though we set everything to transparent, there's no textures there. And so it's blinding our camera. So the best thing that we can do is go into our camera manager. And at the very top, we're going to add one more condition. So I guess I, I said, we didn't need it. I lied. We do need it. You could add it to here if you wanted to, but I think that this is a great time to use a beginning of the scene script. And at the beginning of the scene, we're simply going to hide hide the camera. Okay? This doesn't prevent you from using its features. It just simply hides the object. Now, okay, we're looking around, but where, where in the heck is our ground? Now, this is part of what I was saying before. So because of how we have this set up, we need to rotate ourselves negative 90. And you can see what's happening here. If I click this button, um, we should be rotating in a direction. I want first negative 90 because this moves me from facing this way to facing up. And I, I always like to make it so that when I start my game, I'm facing the north direction. It just, for me, it makes more sense. OK. So now I'm going to move this down to negative 17. And the reason is because our player is at a depth level. I want them to stop at the zero layer, but they're 16 tall. Zero is at their feet. And if I put, if I don't move the ground down, when, or at zero is at, at the, like the peak of the camera. So we're, because we don't have an object using collision, we're going to fall until we're in the floor. And I, there. And simply that fixed it. We moved, we were inside of the floor. I moved it down, and now we're on the floor. But no movement's happening. Because in because we're using a 3D extension, there is no feature to automatically move your player like it is if you add the condition um, or the extension like top-down platformer. It's not built into it. And that's actually a good thing. Let me know what you thought about this video. Please leave a like, comment, and consider subscribing. Remember, happy game making, and I'll see you in the next video.